Kitchen. Feeling a bit peckish? No, I just wanted a snack. There, then, that's better. And I have the perfect treat for you, dearie. I first made this a long time ago, before I'd even met your granddad. Oh, good memories, good memories. Did you work in a bakery? Oh, no, love. I was participating in a church bake sale. And as I recall, there was a handsome young parishioner who had his eye on me. He jumped out of planes? No, oh dear. Not parachute, parishioner. He and I just attended the same church. Okay, go on. So, this particular gentleman thought himself an expert on hanging large banners. But truth be told, he was just a bit of a show off. Well, prideful as a puffin, actually. What happened? Well, he refused to let anyone help him by holding the ladder he was standing on whilst trying to hang that bake sale banner right over that table of meat pies and cakes and such. Said he knew what he was doing. And? Well, pride goes before a destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. You mean? Means he was puffed up with pride, let it get the better of him, and that ladder wasn't as steady as he thought. <laughs> hmm, messy business, pride. Jelly deal as well. Uh... Well? We've struck? Paint by numbers. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. Something right up my artistic alley. And look, it's a dog holding an umbrella? Uh, yeah. It's from the Surrealist collection. Where are your glasses, anyway? Don't need them. Glasses are unnecessary for someone with my awesome talent and panache. With your what? I heard Grandmom say it once. She said it's French for... La Grande Show. Just doing what comes naturally. Big difference. You color in the drawing there by matching the numbers with the ones on the paints. Those numbers are, uh, pretty small, huh? Not at all. What better way to expand my advanced artistic talent beyond all those finger paintings I've made for Grandma's refrigerator? You know, I could run downstairs for you and get your glasses. Where'd you leave them? Oh, sit down. I don't need any help because I know what I'm doing. This might not be as hands-on as finger painting, but an expert artist can adapt if necessary. Okay then, Picasso. Can't wait to see that one on Grandma's fridge. <laughs> all the lines? No, not really. That looks nothing like it's supposed to. Okay, then. Let's have a look at yours. Well, well, first of all, you've got that big blue thing where there's supposed to be a big brown thing. That is a clipper ship, Mr. Magoo. But I'm having fun doing it my own way, thank you. Well, at least one of us has the motor skills and the panache to create true art. Well, at least one of us has a head so big that there's not enough room in this attic for two of us. Enjoy your solo career. Oh, I will. I don't need your help or your company.
Pretty quick on the draw there, Doctor. Ma'am. Our mission, young friend, is to prevent the imminent demise of thousands of space cruisers across the galaxy. We must deploy ourselves to reinstate the signal that warns against the perilous tidal of these waves and the cosmic reef they surround. Sounds exciting, huh? The tidy... these? Yes, it's quite simple, really. All we have to do is repair the beacon here at Light Station Kilowatt. Boy, I love these things. But I'm an artist. I don't know the first thing about... The lighthouse is actually more of a traffic signal, letting cargo freighters know when the electron tides have aligned to permit safe passage by the color and action of its beacon. We've been working on a device which serves as a temporary substitute beacon while repairs are made on the failed signal beam to restore its proper spectral wavelength and pulse cycle frequency. And sets it back to being red and blinky. You know what they say. Green and steady, passage ready. Red and blinky, conditions stinky. It's been quite a team effort so far. Now freighters will have ample warning to steer clear of the tides until it's safe to go through. I'm yeah! very proud of each one of us. Rightfully so. And this little ship of ours is the only one in this galaxy small and powerful enough to get us through the perilous Bumi's waves and keep us off the reef. <laughs> Thanks, I needed that. But what do you want me to do? Well, our solution has everything spit spot, except for one thing. That's where I come in. Alas, the poor doctor is colorblind as a mackerel. So, as captain, I've assigned myself to be his replacement, uh, what was that again? Yes, uh, well, while we oversee things here on the ship, the captain is going to be manning the remote control panel as our mm, wavelength and pulse cycle, cycle frequency, frequency tuning engineer. engineer. Yes, sir! And the expert wave frequent cycle daily engineer that there is! I've got to keep the ship under control in those waves. That's right! The man in the field! And we need you here with us on this end. For panache? The grunt in the trenches. Well, sort of. I need your help to monitor the temporary beacon's color and visibility here from the ship. The fly in the ointment. That's perfect. Color comes to me quite naturally, you know. The bee in the bonnet. Oh, and Kevin will be serving as my trusted assistant. Trusty assistant bee bonnet trench grunt. Approaching light station kilowatt. Right. Whose turn is it?
one that's going ashore. I hope they're in. You're late. Huh? He says you're late. Now see here, Bobby. Uh, Kevin? He says there's another ship coming. Captain? Ship the captain? Come in, Captain. Wouldn't you know it. Hello? Captain, there's a bit of trouble headed our way in the form of a heavily loaded transport vessel with a highly fragile cargo. What is it? That's the FSS Emperor's Pride. If we don't do something quick to change its course, it'll get caught in the incoming tide and destroy itself on the unaligned cosmic reef. In six minutes. <sighs> so some stereo equipment goes straight into the scratch and dent bin. Big deal. You can't rush an artist just before showtime. Captain, we are all directly in the path of that enormous freighter. <laughs> Delay your worries. Kevin and I are on the job. Yeah. Uh, Captain, permission to suggest the three of us go and try to head off the Emperor's Pride before it gets much closer? Permission granted. I suggest the three of us go and try to head off the Emperor's Pride before it gets much closer. Very good. In the meantime, Kevin and I will carry out our mission here with a little expert panache. Hey, Kevin. <clears throat> this is Captain Zigil calling, uh, my ship. Come in, ship. This is ship, uh, Midgel, Captain. Tell them to hurry. The cargo ship is still closing in, and I'm not sure if we'll be able to head them off in time. We need that beacon to warn them. Do you have that gear set up yet? This is, uh, woven thing plus Clyde's frequent turtle engineer, uh, Zigil. <laughs> Preparing to activate the, uh, thingy here. Activate thingy! Roger. Kevin. Here. There. All it needed was one big jerk. You have less than a minute to get that beacon working, or it's lights out for that cargo cruiser. And you. What? What's happening? Secure yourselves, mates. This fog is getting pretty thick. What is it? Fascinating. It's a vaporous anomaly unique to this sector, the thick and fickle Piscine Super Nebula. Oh, dear. And... It appears to be interfering with our radar contact with both the lighthouse and the Emperor's Pride. Oh, I can't see a thing. And with the navigational systems out, I'm gonna have to shut it down until this clears up. Captain, I strongly urge you to get that beacon functioning so we can at least establish visual contact with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, roger that. <laughs> Preparing to tune frequency. So, Kevin, how many penguins does it take to change a light bulb? Um, four. And one little girl. No, no, no. It's a joke. See, you're supposed to say, I don't know how many. Okay, so, how many penguins does it take to change a light bulb? I don't know. How many? One! As long as it's me! <laughs> oh, classic. Hey, what's your name? Where are you from? Great, great. Well, uh, 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 let's just uh, DC of some D here. Uh huh. <laughs> it's why I get the big money. <laughs> For my next number. I oh, don't get it. Well, you see, it's kind of a pun. And big finish. <laughs> What? Oh, that's pretty. But should it look like that? Captain, is that you? 
Is everything okay? Hey, okay, Doctor. Oh, yeah. But, Captain, you simply can't treat that equipment. Hey, Doc, not now, huh? The show's going great. Besides, I know what I'm doing. I'm an engineer. Woo! Woo! Is that light? It's green. Oh, dear. Something's gone wrong. I'll say. Look, the light color has topped on green. The Empress Bride must think it's signaling a safe passage now. <coughs> Captain, come in, Captain. You must change the light back to flashing red immediately. Just listen carefully and I'll help you through it. No. Help? No, no. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to see if I can get that cargo ship on the old horn here. Uh, just have a little chat. But, uh, yeah, I'm good here. Thanks. How are you? We've got to catch up with that ship. And do what? We'll figure that out when we get there. Calling all ships! Calling all ships! Mayday! Mayday! Pay no attention to the steady green beacon light signaling you onward. It, uh, doesn't count. Got to fix the beacon. It has to flash red. Got to fix the beacon. It has to flash red to stop. Hurry! It's about face. Uh, drop anchor. Uh, Harvester. He's trying. I oh, know. Yes. Yeah. Wait. What? Channel four. Oh. All right then. I'll tell him. Cheers. They're a bit upset. What? Not now, Kevin. They say the big ship is. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I think their idea will help. All right then. If you're the expert now, you dial up that ship. Don't let your pride get in the way of solving this problem. Remember, pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. Uh, Kevin, I don't know what to do, and I need your help. Eh? Kevin, I don't know what to do, and I need your help. That's it! Kevin, we are a genius! My good bulb people, I need your help to save that ship! Follow me! Log, Stardate, do mm, say noonish. The Piscine Super Nebula and the perilous Hermes waves nearly claim two more vessels. But thanks to Michelle's words of wisdom, destructive pride was set aside just in the nick of time. Furthermore, the cooperative bald headed natives helped me realize that a light show isn't what we need to make the act really work. So I figured out something better. Hey, Kevin, knock, knock. Come in. Uh, no, 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 you're supposed to say, uh, who's there? Who? Who's there? Wait, wait till I say knock, knock. Sorry. Okay, okay, ready? Okay. okay. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? Dwayne. Your name's not Dwayne. I know, I know, it's part of the joke. Oh, sorry. 
Come in, Dwayne. You're not waiting for me to... Hey, is Sigil's middle name Dwayne? No. It's Lloyd. <laughs> That's, uh, classified, Mitchell. Whoa, please give me a hike first. Oh, Jason. Oh, Jason. I'm sorry I was so prideful before and chased you out of here. Now I know what happens when pride gets the better of me. And now I don't even have enough paint left to try and fix it. Hey, don't worry about it. And look, since I didn't do mine the right way either, I've got tons of paint left over so you can redo yours. <laughs> <laughs>